What is up and welcome to the Wednesday night Grumpy Sound Guy show. I am on vacation this week, so this is vacation mode. <laughs> I hope you can understand that and I hope you enjoy tonight's content. <clears throat> Let's take care of some business real quick. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, something else I want to plug real quick here at the top of the video is um, I did an interview on the Musicians Cafe podcast about a week ago. Last Wednesday is when that aired. Uh, and it is blowing up like a tick all across the uh, podcast streaming services. So it's a really cool in-depth interview about my start in the business and, you know, some of my you know, philosophy and how I got where I am, you know, in the production slash music business. And, um, it's really cool. And I, I think most of, most of my followers who have listened to it, uh, has given us just amazing feedback. I'm very humbled by the amount of support that I've gotten, um, through that podcast. So again, the musicians cafe podcast, you can find it, Anywhere you stream podcasts, uh, just look up the Musicians Cafe and you will find that. And I was um, last week's episode. So, yeah. So this week, I want to kind of take some time to just talk about, you know, breaking into the production business. Um, I really, I keep getting, I really keep getting, you know, hounded about this. Uh, from a variety of different people. Um, I get parents that, that contact me all the time about, you know, how can my, my son or daughter get in the production business? Um, what does that look like? What is the best avenue, you know, to break into the business and all that kind of stuff? Or my son or daughter just got out of uh, sound school, rather it was some a specialized school in Nashville or something like that, or they went to a university and took um, a production of some sort, the recorded sciences courses, or, you know, I forget. Each school has its own little fancy title for what it is to get a bachelor's or some kind of associate's degree in doing production work. Predominantly those, um, and we'll probably talk about this more as we move on in the conversation today. Predominantly, um, most of those programs are geared toward studio recording. Um, at the very least, if you go to a university, you may actually get a little bit of hands-on working in a theater uh, or something like that. So you'd kind of get sort of kind of an idea of what it would be like to be a house sound engineer because that's about as close as they get to um, doing that. Of course, everybody wants to know how they can make maximum amount of income and money with minimal amount of manual labor. <laughs> and I laugh because I really can't say that with a straight face uh, because if you're not ready to work and break a sweat and you know work in the rain and the cold and the the 110 degree weather like it's been here lately um then this probably isn't the business for you and a lot of what happens and a lot of what i see going on with young guys is they kind of have this romantic idea that if they go to school then that's going to guarantee them some sort of uh what we call in the industry a walk-in job which means there's no manual labor and you're basically, we also call those white glove jobs because you never get your gloves, you know, uh, dirty. They're always white. Um, yeah, you're kind of in love with this romantic idea of just walking into, you know, a coliseum full of people and walk behind the console like you're the hierarchy of pro audio. And, you know, that's how you're going to live your life if you go get a degree. When the reality of that is... That's, that could not be further from the truth. Most guys that come to me and say they just got out of school, what that usually translates to me is I now have to unravel a bunch of things that they taught you. Some schools do better jobs than others, you know, in teaching you guys, you know, fundamentals. But, you know, I don't need people who can, who can mix per se, you know. 
everyone that works for me can pick up the iPad or set behind a console and, and mix a show. There's not a, a high demand for that, you know? What there is a high demand for is someone um, who can really deal with all the ins and outs of what it is to do mobile audio. You know, that means wrapping cables, you know, pushing boxes. There's a lot of manual labor in, involved in this stuff. Uh, being able to weather long days in a row, like doing, you know, three and four days in a row where you're on site 16, 18 hours a day, you know, that sort of thing. Because that's what the gig is, you know, and there's, you know, I guess I'd let me just bust your bubble and saying that there's there's no money in, well, there's very little money in owning a studio of any kind, of any capacity, um, because everyone with a MacBook Pro now has, has their own studio, you know? They've converted their basement or their garage or, a, you know, a family room in their house or something into a recording you know, room or something like that. We call those project studios. You know, in my day, a real studio was the size of a warehouse and you would go in and it'd be a control room. There'd be one or two vocal boots or isolation boots. There'd be a big live room that has been acoustically designed and treated to uh, really reproduce things like drums and guitar and piano and things like that in a very intelligent manner. That room was also designed in a manner to where you can move those instruments around that room and it sounds different because sometimes one drum set may be a little louder or liver, live sounding er than others and you can move them toward or away from a corner of the room that has a huge bass trap or something like that in it. So th that's that's what a real studio is. You know, your, your buddy who's got something going on in his basement with a live room and a control room or it all in the same room, you know, um, that's kind of what the modern day, you know, home project studio looks like. And it's so incredibly competitive that there's just not much money to be made there. You know, I got a couple of the guys that work for me do some of that kind of recording. And man, if they had to live off of that, they would absolutely starve to death. You know, so if you're getting into this business thinking that's what it's gonna be, then um, you're gonna get a rude awakening. You know, and then when they call me, once they realize that that end of the world is kind of a dead end, then they, the next option is is to get involved in live audio because that's where all the money's at. You know, we live in a world right now where, you know, playing live is the only way bands can make money. You know, because record sales have kind of went in the pooper ever since, you know, Spotify and, you know, all the streaming services have come to the surface ever since Napster, really. Uh, all that has kind of just went belly up. So it has never been a better time to be in, you know, live specifically mobile audio, lighting, staging, you know, that sort of thing. So those guys kind of get pumped full of sunshine in college, you know, with the promise of, you know, some romantic lifestyle on the road or, you know, something like that where they're never gonna have to work hard uh, and then they get out of here and it's a culture shock. And then I've had some of them guys like literally get mad at me when they call me for a job. And in my company, the way it works is everyone starts off as a stagehand. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much experience you have. You know, I, I just fired a guy this year because he was getting all up on his high horse thinking that he was, you know, better than all that and worth, you know, twice as much as everybody else in the company. And the market just doesn't bear that kind of pay rate. And I'm like, well, dude, I don't want to tell you then, you know, I mean, I don't ever want to get in the way of anybody who feels like they have more opportunity in other places, you know, be free, you know, go, go find and freelance your way into what you feel like 
is something that is worthy of your skill set. But I also know that, you know, that that's a hard road to home. You know, so everyone starts out as a stage hand. I need everyone to be able to do everything on site before you're a valuable asset to me. It's kind of like going to work for a restaurant. You can't be a manager in a restaurant until you learn how to, you know, wash the dishes, you know, cook the orders, prep the food, you know, put in orders for food, you know, receiving food in and checking it in. Like you need to do every job in a restaurant so that as a manager, you know what it takes to do every job in a restaurant. And because of that, you have the ability to manage all the people who are doing those things. It's the same thing in our world, you know, I, I need guys that can do all those things. You know, if you can mix, hey, great, that's awesome, you know, but it's my name on the side of the truck. The, the mix has my name on it, and I am always gonna want you to mix the way I mix because that is what people are purchasing from me. They are purchasing the services of JR's mix is very consistent. It sounds a specific way. We like that. It, it's very sellable, that sound. And his gear is extremely dependable. Um, he doesn't have stuff that breaks down in the middle of a show, you know, knock on wood. <laughs> I mean, Murphy's Law kicks us all in the rear end at some point or another, but, you know, we spend a lot of time doing gear maintenance, you know, and managing, you know, cables correctly and making sure that everything is what it should be, you know, in terms of gear working properly. I need people who are willing to learn all that stuff. You know, and as people will come in, you know, they'll think that three months in, okay, now they have all that stuff figured out. I'm ready to be, you know, the guy at the top of the ladder, making the maximum amount of money and bossing a bunch of other people around. And that's just not how it works. We all do the same job, you know, and I am, an, I am a boss and an owner and an employer who is not afraid to get his hands dirty. You know, I am not afraid to get in there and sweat and, you know, break my back and my knees and everything else to, you know, to be right there beside you, you know, rolling cables and pushing, you know, racks and loading trucks and, you know, all the stuff that it takes to do what it is that we do. So, you know, when a cat calls me and says, hey, I just got out of school in Nashville and I'm looking for a job, you know, those guys, I'm usually like, you know, about all I have available is, is an interning position because I'm not gonna pay people anything until I see what their work ethic is. Because a whole bunch of those cats, and I've been through a bunch of them, a whole bunch of those cats that are coming right out of school have no idea what they're in for in mobile audio. They don't, they don't have any idea about how hard the work is, how long the hours are, you know, what the pay scale can be and can potentially be. And I think I probably pay my guys better than most of my competitors, or at least the same as my competitors, because I believe investing in guys. Look, if you're somebody who comes to the table and you're humble and you're teachable and you're, you're ready to get out there and get your hands dirty and learn all the ins and outs of the way I do things and learn things the way I want them done, because again, I own everything. It's it's my company, um, then man, I don't have a problem, you know, trying to throw you maximum amount of money. You know, when the budgets are there and there's money to be made, hey man, no problem. I will 100%, you know, um, you know, give you, you know, give you the money that I can possibly give you, give you as much money as I can possibly give you. I don't have a problem with that, you know, but I got to know I can depend on you. I got to know that you're going to be where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there. You got to have a positive attitude because usually the client is standing 20 feet from us watching the whole thing go. I mean, what we do is very interesting. So, you know, people like to stand around and watch what we do, you know, and a lot of times that's the client. You know, you got to watch your potty mouth and look, I'm as guilty of this as anybody, you know, but if the client is standing right there, you know, we don't want to, you know, sound like a bunch of sailors. We want to sound like professionals. You know, we don't want to be arguing with each other. We want to be laughing and having a good time and joking around and bringing positive energy to the event. That is super huge and important. And uh, I will let guys go in a second if they can't follow at least those basic things. 
you know, be a professional, dress correctly. You know, don't show up at the job with, with canvas shoes and, you know, this, that, and the other. And like, because all my guys are subcontractors. And if you get hurt, that's on you. You know, you, you should be smart enough to know that you're not going to be rolling heavy speakers and cases around or whatever and, and Chuck Taylors and then complain about, you know, your foot getting smashed or something like that. You know, wear decent shoes, at least decent sneakers. You know what I mean? Uh, something made out of leather, something that gives you some protection. I got one guy works for me, wears, you know, steel toes. I don't blame him, you know, but he's trying to protect his feet. They make steel toes and really cool sneakers now. They're actually very comfortable and they look pretty stylish for alloy toe, you know, shoes. So, yeah. So, I mean, you know, all that stuff matters, man. And, you know, what's going to get my attention more than anything else is two things. Number one, your work ethic. Number two, you taking care of my equipment as if it was your equipment. You know, you taking care of my equipment in the same manner that I take care of my equipment. You being teachable. You being someone that I can go to and say, hey, look, I would rather you do this this way. Uh, and here's why. I usually always give a reason why it needs to be that way. And, um, yeah, don't give me a bunch of grief about that. I'm the boss. I'm the owner. I'm the guy that is taking all the risk. I'm the guy whose insurance policy is on the line here. If somebody, you know, something falls on somebody or something like that, man, everything's got to be done exactly the way I want it done. You know, and if you're someone who can't take instruction because you've been in the business for 22 years and you think you know better than me, go work for somebody else. I don't have time for you, you know. I just don't, you know. Everybody's got to be teachable because you know what? I'm still teachable. You know, some of my young guys has been with me three or four years. And there's a bunch of times they come to the table with information about this, that, or the other gear or, or a mixed philosophy or something like that. And, man, we're staying in there like... I'm like, wow, dude, I didn't know this. I'm learning something right now. You know, this is awesome. I don't claim to know everything, but what I know has value. And until your name's on the side of the truck and you're paying the insurance premiums and you're buying all the gear, you need to follow instruction and you need to be someone that I can teach. Those are the people I want to surround myself with. Those are the guys that I want to invest in. Those are the guys that I really want to pour my knowledge and wisdom into because I always want to try to pay it forward. But if you come into this situation with some kind of arrogant attitude, like you got it all figured out because you just finished, you know, 14 months of, of schooling that cost you probably 80 grand in Nashville, I probably don't have a lot of loose, a lot of use for you. And I'm probably going to let you loose real quick probably just going to be like, you know what, dude, I don't think you're a good fit for our team. You know, when I tell you to do things in a specific manner, they need to be done in a specific manner. It, it boggles my mind as to how many of these young guys can't follow simple instructions. You know, I, I recently handed the easiest mixing gig on the face of the earth to a guy. And all he had to do was go in and Brad Fader's and do exactly what I had told him to do, what, my, what one of my other guys had told him to do. And what does he do? He goes in there and totally tries to revamp the whole mix, revamp the whole, you know, the way these people do things. And then the client's calling me saying that things are horrible and things are not working out the way they need to be worked out. We need to do something about this. And it's like, you know what, man? Sometimes I just don't have time to unravel all your bad self-taught habits or your bad education, because I've had a bunch of guys come out of, in some cases, four-year university who don't know their rear end from a hole in the ground and want to act like because they got a bachelor's degree in recorded sciences that, you know, they got it all figured out. Dude, you are going to get axed in a second. I have no tolerance for that whatsoever. And the guy that I'm talking about, I had to let go. Like, dude, I just, I can't do this with you. You know, I, I don't have time to teach somebody from the ground up. You know, I gave you the easiest possible way to make money on, on, a, on a gig that's very low maintenance. And you wouldn't listen. 
you decided that you knew better than me and that you wanted to reinvent the wheel there when the wheel was already okay and rolling down the road. All right, well, go take that mess someplace else. You know, go ruin somebody else's, you know, account that they have spent years cultivating. I got, I got four years, five years in that account, you know, that I have been cultivating with these people and getting them to a place where, you know, it's, it's pretty low key, you know? And the gig paid half decent money. It wasn't great money, but for a walk-in gig that you're only there like four or five hours and all you gotta do is just ride faders. You ain't gotta worry about, you know, ringing the room out every time. All that stuff's done. This guy couldn't leave it alone. Next thing you know, things are feeding back and things like, dude, what are you doing? This is not what I told you to do. I don't have time for that, man. I just don't. So go kick rocks. I don't know what to tell you, you know? Uh, I genuinely try to be patient with guys and ask guys to, you know, do this and to do that and, and, how they take instruction is always a big deal for me. You know, if I go to tell you something and the first thing in your mouth is, oh, I know, oh, I know, oh, I know. That just triggers me to the moon. Because it's like, no, dude, if you knew, I wouldn't be standing here having to tell you how to do this, okay? I want this done my way, all right? Why is that so hard? And then you want to get, you know, sideways with me because you are not teachable and you can't take instruction. Like, dude, I'm the one, I'm the one signing the check, okay? I'm the one paying you at the end of the day. You should be very nice to me. I'm giving you an opportunity to learn things that you just spent. In some cases, I know guys that have spent almost $150,000 in four-year university and they spend two years with me and learn more in the first six months than they did in four years. I've had those guys tell me that. JR, I have learned more with you in the last month than what I have in the last three years of university. Why aren't they teaching me this? I don't know. That's not my problem. It's not my circus. It's not my monkey. The only thing I can speak to is this is how I have learned the business. I have a success record that speaks for itself. I'm in demand. We're, we like constantly, you know, just falling over ourselves, trying to keep up with the amount of business that's coming in. I need people I can depend on, man. You know, and I feel like everybody wants to be a sound engineer, but no one wants to do the work that it takes to, to become a sound engineer. Because I got news for you. You know, a bachelor's degree in this does not make you a sound engineer. There's so much more that you need to know on the engineering side of this. You need to understand basic elect electricity, you know, especially single and three phase, you know, kind of stuff. You need to understand how that affects your mix. You know, having correct power to the amplifiers and to the boxes that you're mixing through and all that kind of stuff. You know, you got to have, uh, you know, a little bit of physical acoustic engineering, you know, under your belt. Understanding how sound works in a space, whether it's outside, bouncing off buildings around you, or it's in an arena, or it's big and boomy and you, you, you know, you have enough reverb for three you know, different arenas and you got to you know, mix your way around that or you're in a small, you know, club, you know, trying to ring that room out and make it sound good. A real engineer understands the acoustics of all those different environments and his mix sounds the same in each environment because he knows how to correct for the room. He knows how to correct for the venue. Those are things that take at least 10 years to learn. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I mean, I'm being generous with that, you know? I think any craft that anybody sets their hand to do takes at least 10 years to have any form of master level, varsity level skill set. Otherwise, you're a sound guy. You're a weekend warrior, okay? You're an IT guy during the week and you're running sound at your local club on the weekends or a beach bar or a dock bar or, you know, some kind of thing like that. You know, you're making 75 to 125 dollars a night, and that's that's your whole life. That's a sound guy. That's not a sound engineer. A sound engineer has system tech skills out the rear end, understands how to spec a system, understands how those specifications reflect against the, the client's needs and their desires and what they want. And most of the time the client doesn't even know what they want. You gotta be able to look into that crystal ball pro audio and lighting and staging and be able to give them what they're envisioning. That's what a sound engineer does. 
you need to have taken the time to learn everybody's job on site. You need to have taken the time to learn how to be excellent at everybody's job on site from the stage hand to the A2, to the LD1, LD2, you know, to stage managers, to everybody, you know, to the guy that, that, that hooks up the feeder cables and the distro boxes to supply electricity to the place. You know, you gotta have some knowledge of rigging, you know, and all that kind of stuff. That's what a sound engineer is. Not someone who can sit behind a console and mix a show. That's a sound guy, okay? Two big, di two big differences there. You know, and you don't come out of college as a sound engineer. You come out of college as a sound guy. All right. You get out here on the road for, you know, another six or eight years on top of your four year college. Then come talk to me about being a sound engineer because that's what it takes. So my advice is, and it's, it's the same. We actually talk about some of this in the podcast on the musicians cafe interview that I was talking about at the top of this video. Um, I am asked this question, you know, how can people break into the business? And here is my, you know, five ninety nine answer. If you don't know anything about anything, you're not a musician, a DJ, you have no experience, you've never touched a piece of sound equipment in your life, you should probably entertain going to some kind of school. I don't know if you need to go to four years of school, that's entirely up to you, your budget, and your expectations of your career. A bachelor's degree has never gotten a guy that I've known any further than a two-year associate's degree in this business. Because both of you are going to be shoved at the bottom of the totem pole and made to work your way up in any real production company that you come into. That being said, I don't think school is 100% necessary for everybody. Some people just aren't school people. I'm not a school person. I didn't learn this by going to school. I learned this by getting out here and giving you know, the first two years of my life, three years of my life, to uh, you know, guys in, in the mid-Atlantic who were very talented, had established production companies, and I went and wrapped cables and pushed cases and set up back line and, and did whatever I had to do just to be able to be in the conversations of the guys that held the keys to the kingdom. That's something that I see a severe lack in nowadays. Now guys don't even want to show up unless you're going to pay them a couple hundred dollars and they don't even know their ass from a hole in the ground. But you got to pay them something just to get them to show up. I am not like falling over myself to hire this kind of guys. You know, you give me someone who's willing to intern, even if they'll just give me three months of their life interning, I, I can then first discover whether or not this business is for them. And second of all, get enough training in them to where they have some kind of value when they come to the table. Um, and, you know, then I can maybe throw some money their way and make that time worth their while. But it still takes time to get going in this business that way. So if you're not a school guy, you're someone who struggles with school and being in a school you know, framework, find a company like myself or a pro touring company or maybe you can go to work in the warehouse you know sweeping the floors and and just doing whatever grunt work they they want you to do if you do that you will eventually end up out on the road with somebody pushing boxes and wrapping cables and that's okay you know and you will slowly within the first three to four years work your way up through to where you'll be a valuable asset to that company that's what i'm looking for those are the people that I'm looking for. Those are my people. Those are the guys that I cherish. Those are the guys that can call me when they're in a jam, like, hey, dude, you know, is there any way you can help me out? I'm kind of in a little bit of a jam and, you know, blah, blah, blah. We got some work coming up. I don't have a problem with trying to help them kind of guys out, you know, and throwing them some extra work or loaning them a couple dollars or something or whatever. If you're part of the CLP family, I do my very best within my means reasonably to try and help guys out. You know, um, but those are people that are already established in the company and got a couple years of working with me under their belt because then they're valuable assets at that point. So really the easiest, most financially conscious way of getting in this business is going to work for a production company. You know, if I always say, if you give me a year of your life, you know, within six months, you'll probably be making a little bit of something 
you know, I'll make sure you get fed and you have beverages, you know, non-alcoholic beverages and things like that on the job site. I always take care of all my guys that way. Um, but, you know, within that first year, I'm going to bombard you with a huge amount of industry wisdom, knowledge, and technical skill that you're not going to learn in a school, okay? And you could very easily work your way into, I've got guys, most of the guys that have worked for me at some point or another have been able to leave my company, name drop me to open doors to get into other companies. Even if they're people that got fired, they still will drop my name and then that will a lot of times open doors. What they don't understand is most of the time those people you're dropping my name to pick up the phone and call me and want a reference. And if you're somebody that I think can help them out, you know, I will give you a great reference. If you're someone who is just genuinely moving on to your next higher level of growth, hey man, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, but at the same time, if you weren't, I'm always gonna be honest. I mean, these are people that are my friends and you know, my, my acquaintances inside the business, I'm not gonna lie to them and tell them you're, a, you're an A1 where you can barely wrap cables, you know, or something like that. So yeah, man, there's a lot of opportunity here that most cats don't even see, you know? I am so well networked in this business. My phone rings constantly with people looking for sound guys, house sound guys, you know, churches looking for tech guys, you know, all that kind of stuff. There's all kinds of opportunity here. And I only filter those things out to the people that I know can represent me and represent COP Audio with dignity and and integrity. That's very important to me, you know? And people know when they call me, if I recommend this person, they know what they're gonna get. So that has value, you know? So there's a whole lot to be said for just kind of, you know, giving your giving yourself a fair shake and, uh, you know, just getting in the trenches here and, and learning it from the ground up. Because that is the quickest way to get from point A to point B in the business. And you know, here's the other side of this, and I'll end with this, and that is, you know what guys? This business ain't for everybody. You know, you might get in here and, you know, a month in, sometimes a weekend, you know, two weeks in, something like that, you uh, you absolutely positively know that this is not for you. And that's okay, I'm not mad at you, because that's why I don't invest a whole bunch of money on new guys. You know, I wanna see if you're willing to get in here and get in the trenches with me, first of all, and have some work ethic, you know, and all that kind of stuff. After that, you know, we'll, we'll let things unfold as they, as they may. Okay. Hey, look guys, I love you again. Please subscribe to the channel. 80% of you cats are not subscribed to the channel. Subscribe to the channel, like the channel, share these videos, share this video with somebody, you know, trying to break into the business. This is a great video to give to somebody because what I'm telling you is the truth. And I'm coming from 35 years of real world, you know, pro audio, pro level, experience okay i'm not some college professor or or college counselor who's trying to get your money to go to my go to my college no dude i have nothing to gain from this i'm doing this for free i'm making no money off this video okay i'm just trying to pay it forward and give you information that can help you get where you want to go in the business i love all you guys i'll see you next week when i get back from vacation